Good morning, church. Please turn with me to 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 2. Elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, and sanctification of the Spirit, for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace be multitude. Good morning. The song that I'll be uh, sharing with all of you today is entitled Unconditional Love.
Is it on? Good morning and happy Sabbath. Before I start, I'm going to need your help, each and every one of you. At times when I share the Word of God, I get so pumped up and I get so excited and it just spit them out left and right. And some people said they appreciate it. Some people said, I didn't even understand what you said. <laughs> but the Word of God told us in John 12, 32, and if I be lifted up from the earth, you'll draw all men unto me. What my plan is in my prayer, that by the grace of God, when we leave here, that we will be all filled with the Holy Ghost, that we will do what God said. And don't leave yet because, Jeffrey, thank you for that special music. Uh, he's going to sing another special music for us before he leaves. I mean, before the service is over. So uh, I'd like to put my knees down. If you can, I'd like to invite you to put your knees down with me. And I sh as, I, as I share the word of God, I'd like to pray for me. All right, I'm going to put my knees down and pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for the Sabbath. Thank you, Lord, for allowing each and every one of us to be here. Father, without you, we cannot do nothing. Father, I ask and pray that you will give us a double portion of your Holy Spirit, that you will teach us and guide us, that you will help us, Lord, to understand the principle of your word. And for, I pray, Father, that you will help us and strengthen us to apply it in our life, that we may share it to other people. Father, I ask and pray that you will help all of us to be united in spirit and in truth. Guide us, Lord, for without you we cannot do nothing. I pray that you will hide me behind the cross so you will be uplifted that they will see Christ. We ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. As I prepare my study and I punch in, you know, you do research, you know, you look in the computer, you look at your Bible concordance, the title of my sermon is The Great Plan of Salvation Through God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. And you know, of course, God used angels, and God used each and every one of us, because there's a big controversy even among our congregation where they say, you know, the Holy Spirit is not the third person of the Godhead. The Holy Spirit will be the third person of the Godhead because he dwells in us. Amen? Amen. How many times you will go in there and, and listen to the message and we ourselves will say, man, the Holy Spirit of God is in that person. And there's a promise in the Bible in John 14, 26, John 15, 26, and John 16, 13. I want to claim for that promise because the, Lord, the Word of God told us in Isaiah 28, 9, and 10, when we study God's Word, we have to study it for precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. You do not go in there and take one verse of the Bible and take off with it. If you do that, it will be, it's not good. So don't take the text out of context. See what God exactly means. He said, he told us in John 14, 26, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will, will do what? Send in my name, in Jesus' name, whom the Father will send in Jesus' name, he shall teach us how many things? All things and bring all things to our remembrance. But Jesus cannot bring anything to our remembrance, not unless we study it. What I mean is, when you, you cannot talk about Bahamas if you've never been in Bahamas, or you never read about Bahamas, or the Philippines. You understand the principle on what God's trying to tell us? In John 15, 26, if you have your Bible with you, open up to John 15, 26. We're going to open up God's Word, and we're going to study it together. We have to uplift Jesus Christ, the Word of God. In John 1, 1, the Bible told us in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And that Word of God in John chapter 1, 14, He dwelt among us. He became flesh. What did the Bible told us in John 15, 26? Somebody read that, please. It's the same principle as John 14, 26. Can someone read John 15, 26, please? So he talked about the Father, he talked about the Spirit of Truth, the Spirit of Truth, and he, Jesus said, it will testify of me. Who is Jesus Christ? The Son of God, right? 
He told us in John chapter 10, verse 30, what did the Bible told us in John chapter 10, 30? You see, when we study God's word, precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, we have to take God's word the way it is. Do not change God's word. We must be changed. In John chapter 10, 30, what did he say? I and what? My father are one. Did Jesus claim to be God? Did he? In 1 John 5, 7, the Bible told us there are what? Open up your Bible to 1 John 5, 7, so we'll see what God said. You don't go like, well, when you live here, you don't want to say, well, Joseph said this. What we're doing is we're opening up God's word, and we'll let the, 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 the good Lord speak to each and every one of us. What did the word of God told us in 1 John 5, 7? For there are how many? Three, Three that bear record in heaven. The who? The Father. the Father, and who else? The word. And the Holy Ghost. Now, who is the Word? Where does it say that? John 1.1. 1, 1. Praise God. We all know about that, okay? Now, we're going to study about the great I Am. Where do we see the great I Am? In the Bible, of course, right? But where do we find the great I Am? Exodus chapter 3, verse 11. This is Moses when God called Moses. Exodus chapter 3. Starting with verse 11. Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh that I should bring forth children of Israel out of Egypt? So God called Moses... And Moses got a work to do, right? And he said here, and he said, certainly, or in other words, surely, I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, the God of your father shall hath sent me, unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? And what shall I say unto them? So he said, What is your name? And what shall I say unto them? And what did he say? I am that I am. Now you can see that God the Father said, I am that I am, right? Now what did the Bible told us in John 14 verse 6? We should know that by memory. He said, I am what? The way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way. We're living in these troublous times here where all kinds of things will happen in our life. And the more we come closer to Jesus, the more we hold on for the promises, Satan will do every, everything to separ separate us from God. I don't know if you have that experience. I do. And I believe we will all do have that experience because the Bible told us those who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer what? Persecution. We will be persecuted. Jesus told us in John chapter 14, it happened to me first, in John chapter 15, I'm sorry, it happened to me first before it happened to you. But you know one nice thing about God's word, God will not give us any surprises. He said before it come forth, I will tell you of them. So we don't go in there and say, man, I didn't know that these things will happen. All of these things will happen unto us. But you know the main thing? The Word of God told us in Christ's Object Lesson, page 69, when the Word of God is fully reproduced in my people, then I will come and take them as my own. Or where, when the character of God, I'm sorry, is fully reproduced in my people, then I will come and take them as my own. Now the question is, what is the character of God? Where do we find it in the Bible? In Exodus, in the book of Exodus, chapter 33. Let's open up to Exodus chapter 33. Again, this is Moses. Verse 18. The word of God told us, I beseech thee, verse 18, show me thy glory. So Moses is asking God, and he said, show me thy glory. And what is God's glory? It says here, 
And he said, uh, I will make all my goodness. What is it? My goodness. What is God's goodness? In Romans 2, 4, the word of God told us that the goodness of God will lead thee to what? Repentance. And that goodness of God, as God's people, we have to reveal that goodness. And when people see, see that goodness of God, it will make people repent because they see Christ in us. That's one of the character. You know, and even our children, you know, at times you ask yourself, you know, you, you train your children as they grow up. You did your best. And then when they reach a certain point, you know, they don't want to obey anymore. But, you know, that's a time or even before that, the spirit of prophecy counsels us that we should pray right next to their bed, bedroom and pray for them. Because Satan will, will try to destroy our family as much as he can. But as God's people, we are God, uh, people of prayer. Always pray. The Bible told us pray without ceasing. And when you pray, God will open up a way for us. He told us in, in Jeremiah chapter 33, 3, that's our 911, by the way. That's our Christian 911. Does anybody remember what the Word of God told us in Jeremiah 33, 3? That's our 911. We should all know that. If the world got 911, we have 911. And this Word of God here, they're open 724. No call waiting either. Take a look at it. See what the Bible told us in Jeremiah chapter 33, 3. Can someone read that, please? See, God wants us to call upon him. Remember what the word of God told us in John 6, 33? Or Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. God is not telling us that we don't need one another. We have to seek God first. Because he told us in, in, in Proverbs 8, 14, counsel his mind, say the Lord. We have to talk to God first, and God will send the right people to help us out. Amen? Amen? So the Bible told us, call upon me, and I will what? Answer thee, and I will show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest us. That, that, that thou know. You know, God gave us so much promises in the Bible. He loved us so much. He even told us in Isaiah 1, 18, come now. And let us reason together, say the Lord. Though your sins be scarlet, I will make them what? White as the snow, right? So, going back to Exodus chapter 33, Moses asked God, he said, show me thy glory. And then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. I'm reading verse 19. And I will proclaim the name, the Lord before thee, and I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. That word name in there, it means character. To whom I will be gracious and I will show mercy unto whom I will show mercy. In Exodus chapter 34, you can connect that in Exodus chapter 33, verse 5. 34 verse 5. The Bible told us here, And the Lord descended in a cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. Remember, Moses asked him, Show me thy glory. Okay, so here in Exodus chapter 34, he proclaimed the name of the Lord. And what is the name of the Lord? And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God what? Merciful, gracious, long-suffering, and abundant in goodness and in truth, keeping mercy for how many? For thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation. You know, God loves us so much, and he cares about each and every one of us. The great I am. I am that I am. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man come to the Father but by me. Jesus is the great I am. Those three... The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, those three work together. And what is the purpose of man in this world here? What is the, what, they're working together to do what for us? Excuse me? Salvation. For our salvation. That's why the Word of God told us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man 
If any man, he didn't say if any Seventh-day Adventist, if any Catholic, if, if any Protestant, if any man be in Christ, he's what? So he will be a new creature tomorrow, right? Right now. You notice the promise of God is instantaneous because the Bible told us in Psalms 33, 6 and 9, he spake and it was what? Done and he commanded and he stood fast. God loves each and every one for us, each and every one of us. He care about us. That, you know, but, but he told us in John 14, 15, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandment. Our God is a balanced God. He's an equal God. So when somebody turn around and tell you, well, you know, you're being too fanatic, you have to be balanced. We have to be balanced in the word of God. Not in our mentality or not what you think and I, what I think because the Bible told us in, in, in Proverbs 14, 12, somebody read Proverbs 14, 12 on this side and Proverbs 16, 25 on that side because the word of God told us out of the mouth of two or three witnesses shall my word be established, amen? Proverbs 14, 12 and Proverbs 16, 25 on this side here. Can someone read that, please? Read it with power. It, Sixteen twenty-five on this side, please. Read it with power. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. What? Jesus keep repeating himself. Why is that? Repetition deepens impression. Amen. When you want to memorize something, do you read it one time, no. twice, three times? You keep repeating it, but you know, don't get tired of God's word, because. It is God's word that will change us. The more you study God's word, the deeper we go in there. He told us in John chapter 15, let's turn to John chapter 15. Another promises of God's word. Well, first in John chapter 14, by the way, just to let you know, we do have a Bible study every Friday night and it's powerful, it's nice. And when we have a Bible study, God's word is being uplifted. You know, and, and if, if somebody want to turn around and say, well, this is my opinion on that text, I don't want to hear it. And even though the, whoever is leading our Bible study, if he say that, I will cut him off short. Hey, look, man, I don't want to hear what you think or what you believe. I want to hear what God told us. Okay? So, first of all, I want to claim, uh, Jesus told us in John chapter 14, starting with verse 11, he said here, Believe me that I am in the Father. You see the relationship? God the Father, okay, and God the Son. It says in here, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Okay? So Jesus said, listen, believe me for what? For the Father in me and I in the Father, Right? Or else, he said, if you don't believe that, believe me for the very work's sake that he do, right? And then it says in verse 12, now he's talking to us now. It says, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on who? On me, the works that what? I do, shall he do also. Wait a minute now. I thought we're saved by grace, not by works. It's true. We're going to go to that in Ephesians chapter 2. Okay? We're going to let the Bible, we're going to allow the Bible to expound in, in himself. Right? It says here, the works that I do, shall he do also. And how much work? Wait a minute. Lord, you're trying to tell me I should do greater works than you do? Would that be possible? Can we do greater works than what Jesus did in this world here? Now, before you answer, go look at Luke 1, the book of Luke chapter 1, 37. See what the Bible told us in there. We're allowing the Bible to speak, okay? Luke 1, 37. Now, this is nice because, you know, when you live here, you can share to other people what, what you heard. Amen? Luke one thirty seven. Can someone read that, please? For nothing will be impossible with God. For nothing will be what? 
impossible with God. Other verses from the Bible, I mean, other uh, translation. With God, nothing shall be impossible. You notice, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Philippians 4.13, this is the promise of God. The book of Philippians 4.13. So who will strengthen us? Christ, right? Now, if Christ is in us, if Christ is in you and I, is there any impossible things to do? You know, let me share a little story. When I came over here in this country here, I could not speak English that good. Until now, I have problem. You know, and you know how people make fun of you? The way you speak, you know, your, your, uh, your accent and all of that. But you know, people don't know I was born and raised in the Philippines where if you know me, you don't want to be, you don't want me to be your friend. You don't even want me to be around you. You know, thank God for his goodness. And when I came over here in this country, I had to sneak out. And my mom had to go in there. And before you leave the country, by the way, you know, the same thing before we leave this earth here. Uh, before I leave the country, I need police clearance and I need my medical examination. Those have to be cleared. If I have problem medically, I won't be able to, to leave the Philippines. Or if I have any record, they will not allow me to come over here. But my mom knows a lot of big people out there, so she had to pay somebody to get, so I will have a, a, a clean record. I'm not a Christian then, you know. I don't know about the Lord. And I came over here. When I came over here, I said to myself, Lord, you know, even though I don't know Christ then, but I know God is working in my heart. I said, Lord, I want to change my life. I don't want to be like I used to be. You know, you see, in the Philippines, everybody, some, every time somebody knock on the front door, I go open up the back door and take off. <laughs> every time I saw a cop, I go the other way. You know, and, and that's a nasty life. You know, something not to be proud of. I mean, it's a shame. You know, I do things that, man, I'm so ashamed to even share it to other people. Well, anyway... So I came over here in this country, you know, I started working, and every time I say something, people will make fun of me. I, I can't speak English that good. I mean, people call me names, especially when you work in a place where, you know, they're not Christian. But man, let me tell you something. A lot of time it hurts me, but I said, no, you know what? I don't want to go back to jail, or I don't want to do anything foolish, because if I do, they're going to send me right back to the Philippines. And if I do get back to the Philippines, I'm done. I'm doomed. You know, and uh, so I try my best, you know, to, 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 even though I don't know Christ, I would pray and ask God, Lord, help me. You know, I cannot change myself. And believe it or not, I believe that, that well, the Bible told us about predestination, okay? How many of you study about predestination? Some of us did. You know, predestination means God has planned for us. As God's people. Remember now, we are created in God's image. Okay? So he can recreate a new if we if all things are passed away. But I story that I told you my life here. I said, I will. So I hung around with the wrong people, and I said to myself, you know what, if I go on on this life here, I'm going to go back to the same thing. And I said to myself, I don't want to do that. So I met a higher people, educated, and I tell you, it's a blessing. 
They teach me the way, you know, they, they taught me a lot of things. But I praise God and I thank God for that, for that because I believe that God uses that, you know, to, to, to change me. And he can change each and every one of us if we want to. We have to be fully surrendered with God. But whatever we do in our life, let us not limit God. He told us, I can do all things through Christ in Philippians 4.13. And you ask yourself, how will God do that? In Philippians 4.19, for my God will supply how much of our needs? All of our needs. He loves us so much. He cares about us. I keep repeating this word, love, love, love. But you know, there's a condition. According to the Bible, if you love me, keep my commandment. In 1 John chapter 5, he told us, let's, let's open up to the book of 1 John chapter 5. The book of 1 John chapter 5, it says here, what we, need, what we need to do is we need to pray and ask God for help, okay? When Jesus came to Nicodemus, G, uh, Nicodemus asked Jesus, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And what did Jesus told him? You must be born again. Now, we're going to have to ask ourselves, what is that born experience that God is talking about? Let's take a look at them, 1 John 5, starting with, with verse 1. It says here, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So we must first believe. Now, believing is not enough because the Bible told us that devils believe and they tremble. Okay, so it says here, and everyone that loveth him. Now, you see the word love here, believing and loving, right? That begot lo loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and do what? Keep, my, keep his commandments. Now, you know, there's nothing wrong with the Ten Commandments of God. The Ten Commandments is a transcript of God's character. But for some reason, in these last days that we're living into, when you talk about the commandments of God, you are being legalistic. There's nothing wrong with the law. The law is beautiful. You know, if you think about it, if you drive your car from coming out of this parking lot here, and you go all the way on the end, of Route 3, if there's no traffic light, if there's no speed limit, what do you think will happen? You think you will reach the other side? Maybe yes, maybe not, but it will be chaos. The speed limit is very important. Amen? Amen. Is the speed limit very important? Amen. So what do you do when you get caught speeding? You told the state trooper that uh, you're being legalistic? <laughs> or you turn around and you said, man, you know, I'm not convicted. But you know, when we go read God's word, we play around with it, don't we not? Well, I'm not convicted. Well, that's not really what that means. But you know, the more we do that, the more we will grip the Holy Spirit. When we see God's word and he say it the way it is, pray about it and ask God for help and he will help us. Now let's go on and continue on reading James, uh, 1 John chapter 5. Look at what it says here, verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. His commandment is not grievous. Obeying commandment, the commandments of God is freedom. Amen? You know, there, was, there were uh, two prisoners. They were having a Bible study. One said, look, bro, we're, saved from, you know, we're, we're free from the law. The other guy said, no, we're not. That's why we're here. <laughs> so obeying, that's why in 1 Samuel 15, 22, the word of God told us to obey. Behold, to obey is better than what? sacrifice. Obedience is a blessing. Amen? Now it says here, for whatsoever, remember Nicodemus asked Jesus, what must I do in order for me to be saved? So Jesus told him, you must be what? Born again. Now what is this born again experience? It says here, for whatsoever is born of God, overcome it the what? Wow. No wonder why he told us in 1 John chapter 2, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. He said, if you, are, if you have this born again experience, we will overcome what? The world. Right? And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our, uh, even our faith. Now, what is the definition of faith in the Bible? Hebrews what? 11 verse 1. 
right? It says in there, now. When is now? Now is now. What did the Bible told us? Now faith is what? It's a substance of things hoped for. It's an evidence that are not seen. We can't see it, but we believe it because God said it. That's when our faith comes in because as God's people, we walk by faith, not by sight. Don't go by what you see. That's why in, 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 um, in the book of Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we have to focus our eyes on Jesus. And if we do that, all things is possible with him. Now it says here, Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? This is he that overcometh, this, this is he that came by water and by blood. You know, it's very important for us, it's very important for us to understand that when Jesus came here, he came by water and blood, meaning that he came out of his mother's womb. He is created just like you and are. I, I believe that Jesus Christ, when he was here, the more you study God's word, he was 100% God and 100% man. Amen? 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 Okay. Now it says here, but by water and blood, and it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. This is spirit here that God will will send to us is the spirit of truth. That's why he, he, the, the, the Bible told us he warned us. You know, not every spirit, you can't just go in there and believe every spirit. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, the word of God told us, Beloved, believe not every spirit. And how do we try the spirit? By the what? Where do we see that? Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. We want to see the fruit of the Spirit. Amen? What did the Bible told us in Galatians chapter 5, 22? Let's open to that. And someone read that, please. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. brightness that has fallen upon the inhabitants of the earth. In a plan of redemption, Christ is the Alpha and the Omega. Where do we see that? 
I am the Alpha and the Omega in the book of Revelation. The first and the last. It was Christ who from the bush on the Mount Horeb spoke to Moses saying, I am that I am. Wait a minute. It was Christ who from the bush on Mount Horeb spoke to Moses saying, I am that I am. Remember when Moses, when God told Moses to speak to the rock and what did Moses did? Huh? He struck the, the, the rock, right? Now, who is that rock? Where do we find that? Huh? First Corinthians chapter 10. If you look at that, Jesus was the rock. It says here, it says here, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, hath sent me unto you. This was the pledge of Israel's deliverance. So when he came into the likeness of man, he declared himself the I am, the child of Bethlehem, the meek and lowly Savior. Is God manifest in the flesh? This unconscious babe was the promised seed to whom the first altar at the gate of Eden pointed. This was Shiloh, the peace giver. This was he whom seers had long foretold. He was the desire of all nations, the root and the offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. And to us, he says, what did Jesus say about, about himself? I'm going to open up. Uh, he told us in the book, of, uh, the book of John, chapter 6, 35, 48, and 51, the word of God told us, I am the bread of life. Jesus is the bread of life. Of course, the Bible told us in Matthew 4, 4, man shall not what? Live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. In Job chapter 23, the word of God told us that I esteem God's word more than my, my what? Necessary, my, my necessary food. That means, like what he said in Matthew 6, 33, if we will seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness... How many things will be added unto us? All things will be added unto us. Okay? So in, in, in John 6, 35, 48, and 51, Jesus is the bread of life. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the what? I am the light of the world. So Jesus is the light of the world, but wait a minute. I ask myself, Lord, what is there for us? Let's open up to Matthew chapter 5, verse 16. Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. So Jesus is the light of the world. So as God's people, what did the Bible told us? What did the word of God told us? We are the light of the world. that you know he want to give us the power of choice he will not force us he's waiting for us to open the door of our hearts so jesus can come in in our heart amen okay so jesus is the bread jesus is the light of the world jesus is the door in john chapter 10 11 14 he said there that he is what in john chapter 10 Verse 14, 11 and 14, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. You know, you notice something in her. He added that word good shepherd in her. It's not added, that, but it's in her. Why did it say good shepherd? If there's a good shepherd, they will be what? Okay, so in every truth, truth that God have, Satan always have a counterfeit. Okay, so Jesus said, he is the shepherd in John 10, 11, and 14. In John 11, 25, the Bible told us, the word of God said, I am the what? Resurrection of life. 
okay? In John 14, 6, we said it before, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In John chapter 15, he said, I am the true vine. In John 15, 5, he told us to abide in him, abide in me as do what? Take a look at John chapter 15, verse 5. See what it says in there. It's very important for us to see that. And someone read that, please. Is that not powerful? Jesus said, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. And he, any one of us, that abided in me, Jesus said, and I in him, the same bring it forth what? He didn't just say fruit in there. Much fruit. For why? For without me, you can do how much? Nothing. You see how important us as God's people to, to pray without ceasing, ask him, you know, to, to asking Jesus Christ to help us, especially in this last world that we're living into. My brothers and sisters, we are living in the last days. You know, even the word of God, I hate to say this, you know, uh, I want you to pray about this, and I'd like you to pray for everyone that, that whoever will be invited to speak up front here, that they will share the truth and nothing but the truth. How many of you love the truth and nothing but the truth? Only a few people? <laughs> Do you love the truth? Amen. Now, I want to invite Jeffrey to come up front here with us. Jeffrey will sing a song. It's a beautiful song. And I want to invite, if any of you, to come up front with me, and we're going to pray together. If any of you want to recommit their life to Jesus Christ, I invite you to come forward. You know, the Word of God told us in Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, but what? But Christ liveth in me. Okay, we have to recommit our life to Jesus Christ every day because in Lamentations chapter 322, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Why is that? Because his what? His mercy is new what? Every morning. God is inviting us, come unto me, all ye that are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I want to invite you to come forward and pray with me. If any, one, if any one of you wanted to recommit their life to Christ and accept Jesus as their loving Savior, I want to invite you to come forward with me. And don't look at anyone next to you. This is between you and Jesus. And God is watching us. He loves us so much. The Word of God is so clear. He wants all of us to be saved. God loves each and every one of us so much. And all he asks us to do is, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's not hard. And he told us in 1 John chapter 5, my commandments is not grievous. Jesus was, Jeffrey will sing a song, Glorious Love. He told us in Isaiah chapter 49, I have graven thee upon the palm of my hands. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Go ahead, Jeff. my darkness Jesus found me touched my eyes and made me see broke sin's chains that long had bound me gave me life and liberty O oh, glorious love of Christ, my Lord divine, that made him stoop to save a soul like mine. Through all my days and then in heaven above, my song will silence never 
I'll worship him forever and praise him for his glorious love. Oh, amazing truth to ponder. He whom angels host attend. Lord of heaven, God's Son, what wonder. He became the sinner's friend O glorious love of Christ my Lord divine That made him stoop to save a soul like mine Through all my days and then and heaven above my song will silence never I'll worship him forever and praise him for his glorious love my song will silence never I'll worship him forever and praise him for his glorious love and praise him for his glorious love Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you on our knees, Father, I ask and pray that you will Recreate in us a new heart, Lord. I pray that you will help all of us to be united in spirit and in truth. I pray, Lord, that you will strengthen each and every one of us. Help us, Father, to love you and obey you, for without you we cannot do nothing. Father, I pray that you will fill our heart with a double portion of your Holy Spirit, that you will help all of us to love you. That without you we cannot do nothing. We need you, we need you Lord, every moment of our life, Father. Lord, we thank you for answering all of our prayers. Thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. Thank you, Lord, for helping us and guiding us. We ask and we pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much.